will be accelerating operations with PDF2 TXT, GPT summarization, and Azure OpenAI service in the open source ecosystem. Please welcome Dr. Ng from the HKT PCCW group. Dr. Ng, please. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Hi. Um, I, I know it's going to be lunchtime, so I, I won't stay too long. I don't want to block you too, too long for that. But then um, I, I think, uh, you know, most of you guys have been using GPT for, you know, six months, at least three months, I would say. But, uh, you know, somehow always come to my mind that how we can actually, you know, use it to improve, you know, our daily life or, you know, operation. So I think Today, I'm going to share an example with you all. Um, it's more at the demo stage, at this stage, but I think it's kind of like mixing different tools together to make some automation, okay? So uh, I won't bore you too much on this. If I really have a minute or two, I will come back to this. But then I think the key concept I want to say here is, um, you know, most of you know HKT, you know, our, you know, Navigator CSL brands, but, you know, we, we are not only uh, doing infrastructure or as a telecom operator, but we are more a technology company that, you know, we have different, you know, aspect of uh, digital services and we have been working over there for many years. So I'll come back to that if I have time. But then uh, this is my uh, kind of like the f agenda for today. Um, you know, um, I will talk about the project aim, the flow, um, you know, the uh, what API we use and what's the result and some key takeaways I would like to share with you as well. But, um, you know, let, let start with something more interesting first. Um, you know, some people say it's, you know, perfect poem. You, you heard about this perfect poem, uh, you know, or, you know, tutorial about poems, you know, on YouTube, you know, people talk about that. And I'm going to ask you a question. What, what do you think is the perfect poem? or so what is the key component of a perfect poem? I think there's no right or wrong answer, but I, I would like to hear from you. So I also prepare a little bit of uh, gift. Uh, if you raise your hand and you know give your answer, um, is is actually um, our Eden um, you know stickers. It's the first time we share you know publicly, and you know um, it's actually from our campaign of uh, you know 2.5 gigabit per second navigator service, and we print it on postcard. But it's the first time we print it on stickers, so uh, laptop stickers. So anyone interested, just raise your, raise your hand. Um, the question is, you know, uh, what should be the key component of perfect palms? Anyone? Feel free, just, just name something, yeah, please. Precise, yes, please. Yes, another one. That's right, yeah. Any, any more, one more? No? If no, I save some um, stickers for Q&A session, okay? Yeah, so I, I have my own experience, so I share my takeaway. I think, uh, you know, it's a bit abstract from this context, intent, specific, you know, um, output and don't. So I give you a bit, bit more details. Next one. Um, I think it's, um, you know, some people use GPT or POMS, they just say a very short sentence, and sometimes you usually, you know, can't really get what you want. But then if you can, you know, tell, GPT, you know, the background or, you know, what, what, you, what you are actually, what's the setup, what's the scenes. I think that's very helpful, as, you know, to begin with. The second one is what you want it to do is the intent. You have to say it very specifically, just like what, what you guys share. And also give example. Um, if you want it to, you know, put some text in certain format, just give it some example. Yeah, it can learn from your style or from, from what you are telling it. It's actually, um, you know, the same case for our demo later an output format. Um, you know, sometimes you want it to be in the table, you want to be in the text, you want you, it to be, a, you know, a programming code. Sometimes I ask GPT and then, you know, uh, I, I actually want it to write the program for me, but it doesn't. And then I, I want to be in Python, in a coding format, please. Then it will print out in a coding format and you just copy and paste and it's done. So I think that's important. And also what you don't want it to do. Okay, so I hope this is uh, kind of helpful for some of you. Uh, try it again if, if you are, uh, you know, if you struggle a little bit with um, your GPT or POE, that kind of things, right? Um, so this example of we are going to share today is, uh, I think many of you get series, uh, you know, uh, for the hiring role, right? If you are a manager, you know, you screen lots of series and actually take a lot of time. 
And I think it's fine to, to do one by one because that's really important in the hiring process. But if you work in a mid-size or bigger company, usually you see we go to your team or yourself, and then if you filter them, uh, the candidates is kind of, you know, go nowhere after that. But if you ask your HR, will they actually, you know, fit those candidates you filter out with other jobs in the company? They may say yes, but, you know, in fact, they may not do that. Right, so it's a bit of ways of you know um, CV, or we are not actually maximizing the potential of candidates that apply to your company. So we have, we have been thinking about that. It's a pretty similar case for us. You know, we we have a you know big HR team, and they may serve one or two units. They may not have enough time to cover the CV from other business units. So this is the pain point. Um, you know, we try to you know solve. Uh, as, again, I think it's. We are at the demo stage. Hopefully, we can scale it up, you know, across the company later. But we'll see later. Um, so the the you know the flow we are doing is first you got a CV or you, either in Word format or PDF format, usually PDF format, and there's a Python library that you can convert PDF into text. And then from the text, you know, because you know all our personal information, you don't want to you know put. Your, personal information of a candidate up the internet, right? You, don't, you really don't want to do that, and you shouldn't do that, right? So we all, always want you know, um, the cooks on purpose to make sure it only stays within your computer or within you know, the organization. Then um, if you summarize it, the first step is summarize it. You don't want to you know, tell you know, GBT, you know, the email, the telephone number, that kind of thing, so you have to remove all of them. And then summarize the key characteristic of the candidates. And then you know you may ask GBD to help you to rank them, okay? So there are different levels to, to achieve this four step. Let me share a bit more in details. Um, first, um, this is the library we have been using, uh, the Pi PDF two. Um, you know, just a few simple codes up there. Um, I won't go through the detail because most of you are developers, and I think you can manage it well. You can even ask GPD to, you know, write it for you this day. And uh, so, main concept is change, um, convert it into text, and then um, sub. I, I don't know if I pronounce it correctly. Sub, right? Anyway, you you read it yourself to remove the personal information. So I think it's uh, quite interesting that if you if in the CV or in the text it say um, email semicolon, uh, you know, uh, GitHub semicolon, it can identify it well, and it can remove it, just simply remove it. But some of the times, if it's just a name without a semicolon of name, it doesn't know, and it, it fails. So then we add another called PySci, uh, SpySci, that, you know, it can pick up the name or pick up some telephone number we missed in the previous step and remove them as well. So we, at least we have two steps to clear the personal information. And furthermore, um, when we get the text and then you know share with uh, GPT, you can add a you know in the prompts telling GPT that if you see any personal information, please don't take those, please don't consider those, or please anonymize those. You can just tell it to do those to do so. Um, of course, we want it in the Azure Open AI environment because uh, we. You know, um, I think most of the company has been in you know a business relationship with Azure, and Azure, just like um, you know the speaker, previous speakers share, you know, it's a secure environment within your company that you can actually you, you only deal with it, uh, rather than send it uh, send it out to a you know a public GBT or you know a um, you know a public cow that you know um, you know sometimes you don't you don't have a very confidence level of where the data will go. I think that's important. Okay. Um, so I think um, the step here is basically we summarize the candidates and we also send the job description and job requirement to GBT, ask them to rank or match the candidates. Okay, uh, so before I go into the next step, um, there are a few parameters you can tune, uh, you know, with the OpenAI API. I think I just picked the the, you know the the key two parameters, which is temperature and the top P. I think some of you may know some of some of you tune it as well. Um, but um, you know, to be a bit more specific, is temperature is basically talking about you know the unexpected or the creative response or you know the randomness that kind of thing. So if you don't want any randomness, it's just like sometimes when we do machine learning model, you give it sit or random sit that kind of things. So you want to fix a sit because you don't want the randomness, right? So if you don't want that, you can set it to zero, and it will um, you know be more deterministic. 
Okay. Um, However, if you tune the temperature, so please don't tune the top P. I think uh, the official guide is say you only tune one of it. So um, top P is pretty similar. If you set it to zero, it will be less random, uh, you know, in your model, you know, training. Okay, so we break it into three levels of uh, our test or trial. Um, you all know we, we summarize, you know, the theory, and then we put the JD, as well as the job requirement, um, you know, as the prompt, and then we're very straightforward to put those and ask GPT to match it. So basically, um, you will tell them you are ex experienced uh, recruiter in technology industry. You are looking for candidates for this role, or blah 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 blah. You, you can you can just do it, and then um, the request is out of all the candidates with this uh, description present in the following list. Which one do you prefer? Or you can even ask, can you please rank it and please weight them out of uh, you know, 100 points? And it will just do so. I will show you the result a bit later. Um, but this is the, you know, the basic, the core things uh, you know, I think uh, we can do. And um, the next thing is usually in the hiring process, I think some of you hire pe people as well as Green Theory. You're, um, on the job description or uh, you know, uh, requirement, um, you may have some extra, you know, things in your mindset. Say, you know, I want this candidate to have a GitHub. So it's kind of like proof that, you know, he is kind of really into coding rather than just, you know, talking. And then you want this candidate, um, you know, to be how many experience in Python or Java. You know, you may not specifically, you know, write it in your JD, but you have something in mind. Then we try to think about from, you know, a recruiter, we tell GPT that, oh, we have some, underlying principles of that you know hiring manager and can you also consider that in the in addition to the you know the JD as well as the candidate summary we, we provided so it works and it will come up with some result I saw the result later um, so that's the level two and level three is um, I think one of the really cool thing for GPT kind of model is to you know, kind of learn your style or can mimic what you are doing. Just like, uh, you know, I've been trying to write LinkedIn uh, by GPT. So I, I post all the LinkedIn posts I have written and I ask, you know, GPT to learn my style and even all the emoji, that kind of things. And then when I have a new LinkedIn post I want to do, I would just ask, can you write about this in my own style? And it did actually very well. Similarly, we can actually have the hiring manager you know, screen say 10 CV, and he can group that 10 CV, for example, in five groups, very good, good, fair, fail, okay, that kind of things. And you can extract all those candidates in terms of, you know, summarize the, you know, key characteristic and put the JD and say, you know, this is an example, what I talked about at the very beginning for the perfect pump. This is an example of the hiring manager. You know, he has this requirement and he, he you know, weighted or rank these 10 candidates according to this, this, and then, you know, can you please try to learn his style and then do this for the new 10 CV? And this is what we are going to tell ChatGPT. Okay, so um, this is the key concept here. I won't go through very details, uh, but then I show you the result afterwards. Um, so you can see this is covered, the left hand side is the summary, right hand side is kind of the weighting of each candidate and some description or, you know, the the mindset of, you know, um, the output of the, uh, the, the LLM model. Then uh, if you remember stage one, two, three, we talk about, and uh, manual one is, you know, really the human being, the hiring manager, he ran that. And then we have, you know, 10 candidates in five groups. So stage one, it can actually do quite well if just matching the summary of candidates together with JD and job required, uh, job JD and job description. Um, it got, you know, five um, candidates in the right group. Well, there are different uh, metrics. You can measure how successful is GPT model on this, but we try to do it a way that we make them into five groups and then see whether, you know, the candidates belong to the same group. Uh, this actually came out with five out of 10, 50%, pretty good. But if we add extra, talking about, oh, um, I want this, well, you know, in the mindset of the hiring manager that this world, I want it, you know, to have a GitHub. I want it to have, a, you know, five years of, you know, Python, that kind of things. Um, it doesn't work that well. It's just match 
ten percent, just one, and other is kind of like you you're basically adding something to mix it up, and you know um, degrade the, you know the the output, and then if we give example, as I said at the very beginning, giving example is very important. It go back up to seventy percent. Only three candidates missed in the group. So I think if this can scale up to you know thousand or two thousand candidates, that would be super helpful for for HR, um, you know, colleagues. Um, so uh, a bit tips over there. I think um, summarization. Sometimes you have to be very careful if you operating use case like this because sometimes the hallucination is kind of like the mixing, making things up by the GPT model. Uh, you can tell it don't mix any, you know, don't make up things. Here, I, you know, all your summarization has to come from the series. You have, you can be very specific, you know. Otherwise, it will just come up with salary. So if your criteria say I don't want these candidates with, you know, very high salary expectation, when it make up a salary expectation of, you know, really high, that candidate will just simply be filtered out. So you don't want that. And the second part is, um, you know, some tips of those two of the cases that we missed, uh, you know, in the seventy percent. Um, one is uh, we talk about a language. It can be Mandarin, Cantonese, English, proficiency, because most of the CV is likely to be English. Some candidates, why they know this language or not, but quite quite some candidates don't even say that. It would just kind of make it up, or it doesn't understand because it doesn't have the information. So be careful about you know some of the information you ask. It may not appear in the original CV, and um, and uh, another thing is there was a candidate. Pretty good experience, uh, pretty solid background, but it's in biomedical engineering. <laughs> you know, I think it's still kind of engineering. It's still, you know, it, it, he may do very well in, in programming as well. But then, you know, GPT may think this is not computer science or information related, and it just, you know, wag it very low. So it's kind of like, um, I think you need to maybe broaden some of the requirement a little bit. Say, as long as it's engineering, you know, you're fine, you're, you're, you're okay. Yeah, so some tips over here. And uh, I think um, this is interesting, um, the cost. I think if you, you know, call GPT 3.5 Turbo, it is quite cost efficient, I think. You know, for, for a QOE, you know, maximum tokens on the, you know, right, right top corner, you know, in US dollars is, you know, kind of like nothing. But then if you ask the GPT-4 with the biggest, you know, tokens acceptance of uh, 32,000, is actually you know uh, three dollars, almost three US dollars. Um, Twenty something Hong Kong is is not a lot, but if you have lots of queries on that, that will sum up the cost. Okay, so be aware of what you're using. Uh, I think uh, you know bigger model, latest model, always more expensive. Sometimes even multiple times more expensive than the previous one. So you uh, really think about which one you lead. Uh, sometimes I think you know three point five turbo is kind of good enough already. Okay, so. Um, let me see the time. Uh, I think it's okay, going well. And um, so first, um, keep thinking about how you can use, uh, you know, this kind of LM model to improve work operation or even your daily life. And um, I, I think uh, we like to explore some ideas of speeding up process or you know, you know, making things you know more effective for colleagues to work on and free up their time to do something. You know, require more human hum, human to human interaction or innovation or you know more critical thinking. I think this is the part that you know um, GPT can replace us. Then um, this is my final tips of you know um, thinking about um, along this line. I always try to think about new use case as co-pilot. You know, you don't want to rely simply on it. So simply talk about you know screening CV. You know, you may you may do it a human. Um, you know, screening after GPT shotting, and that that's kind of making it more your co-pilot rather than you rely on it. You know, purely on the computer. And also, uh, I always come up with um, new ideas. Uh, if I see, you know, when I work around or when I, you know, you know, work with people, I try always think about you know new use case. I think that you know would be helpful for some of you. Maybe you have some works. You know, can be done by GPT, and uh, you know, can be your co-pilot rather than done, and then you will be the final checker of it. And one more is uh, try to be more master of your palm skill. Um, you know, it it is not rocket science. Take a little bit time, and then you will master it. 
Okay, so we have a booth out there, and feel, feel free to come. I still have to, you know, say a little bit extra things. We, we, are, we are hiring, of course, so if you guys are interested, talk to us, and we have an email even, you know, to contact our team directly. Um, so we are from the technology office of uh, HKTPC. We also want an innovation lab, um, yeah, so with, with all the business unit. And we have a, you know, free, um, you know, a discount ticket coming with this leaflet as well. So back to the things I talked about at the beginning, we're not only a telecom operator, but we are more a technology company. And there are four dimensions that we have been working, pushing quite strongly in the last few years. Um, the first one is the Dr. Go telemedicine. Some of you may have used it. Uh, I think now it's the biggest uh, telemedicine service provider in Hong Kong. Um, it's kind of like corporate startups bef right before COVID. And co during the COVID time, we have helped a lot of families or patients, you know, being locked at home. I think it has been, you know, delivering some very good social purpose. And uh, obviously, uh, you know, most of you got C CVS, the consumption voucher, and they come with, you know, Tap and Go uh, is one of the key players over there, as well as our, you know, virtual bank, Mox. And uh, our very popular uh, streaming service, Yellow Wheel is actually having the biggest number of monthly active users in Southeast Asia. Uh, what I heard is even bigger than Netflix. So if you don't have it, uh, you know, feel free to download it or check to our colleagues out there. And finally, is our cup uh, shopping and cup loyalty points. That you know, as long as you you know, um, you know, use our service, we have you know the cup points, and then you can resume or you can you know, even buy an iPhone later. So basically, that is what I want to go through. I think I just got you know 20 minutes. And, um, I have a few more stickers with uh, Kobe, and anyone have questions, feel free. Yeah, please. Yes. How you, okay. Thank you. Hello. Can you elaborate more on how you asked the GPT to do the uh, field shot training, and are there any techniques to do it, and then do you need to clean up the test your as input, et cetera? Yeah, um, that's a very good question. Um, you know, we, we've, I think at the very beginning, we start to scale pretty small. So even zero sort or one sort, we can actually do it. But then, uh, you know, um, first, I think two dimensions. One is, um, you know, sometimes the token is kind of like, um, we have a maximum ceiling for that. So we make it a few time. The second is we found it, uh, you know, sometimes more intelligent if we can guide it through. Sometimes people call, you know, a step-by-step -step or, you know, train of thought. Then we've, we feel that uh, a few sort of training can improve the accuracy. Um, yeah, so I think that mainly these two purpose, uh, either the uh, maximum token the ceiling as well as the, um, you know, the step-by-step -step guide will be more helpful. Anyone? Feel free. No? Anyone? We still have a bit stickers. Ah, please. <laughs> I don't want to take them home. <laughs> please. <laughs> uh, on average, how much does it cost for you to uh, train your uh, train the model for the, uh, for example, the CV one? Yeah. Well. Um, I, I think even for this case, because we mainly summarize, we, we, we extract the text and then we do the summarization, and then um, you know we ask it to rank. And if you think about you know the price over there, it's accumulative. It's not just say if you ask for a 32k um, you know model to do things, and if you didn't give it you know the, if you haven't consumed all the tokens. You know, it won't charge you the maximum. So for us, you know, in a single job like that, it's you know, it's less than three US dollars. I think that's very acceptable. Yeah. I see. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, please. So when you look at like the table beforehand, when it comes to rankings, you notice that for some of the good ones seem to be like up, you know, having higher rankings. Would you consider the idea that some people might start crafting CV that can be power hacked into Bolivian, yeah. where you know all the rankings are upside down, where qualified people will not get bumped to the top, and where you know the people <laughs> who know how to beautify a CV are actually kind of meh, right? Yeah, you're very smart. <laughs> hey, I don't like CVs either. Come on, like, yeah. Well, let's get real. Let's do I, some real stuff. I think it's a new world. So, so I think there will be people doing that, or you know, if people know. 
you know, there are some system that, you know, really rely on GPT, then they will tailor make something for GPT. I think that's, that's very natural. Um, it will come. And, uh, but at this stage, I think because most of, most of us are still very generous or, or still, you know, very honest, I think we, we won't change this at this moment, but maybe one day, yes. Do we have any stickers left? Or no? Oh, one more, last one, please. Hello, uh, I want to ask uh, in your example, for if I have a thousand of CV, ah. but the model has only, the context is limited, but if so many CV, uh, can it handle it? That's, or that's any problem? Very, that's the next step we, we're going to try. Um, I, I asked my colleagues to scale it up to from, from 10 to 50 or closer to 100. It's still possible, we can still manage it, um, you know, with, um, you know, be because they are memory, right? Because that, that's, you know, um, if you keep asking the, the things, it, it, the GPT model won't remember something very old. So I feel you have to break down the problem. Maybe you, you have to, um, first of all, may, I would say maybe you have, you can't say, you know, I have, you know, 10 jobs or 100 jobs here and then you know, 3,000 candidates here. So just match it for me. I think at this stage, not yet. But then if you just focus on one JD, and then maybe you apply some filtering at the beginning to level it down to rank it to the top, say 20, 30%, I think this is possible. So it's a bit like our engineering problem, how you break it down and structure it for the model to help you, yeah, if you want to scale it up. Yeah. So, and that's, um, you know, I, I, th I think we're going to talk to HR and see if we can help. <laughs> you know, they may have thousands of you know, candidates. <laughs> yeah, and then 300 jobs. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, I don't have stickers for you. <laughs> so, um, uh, for your demonstration, uh, I would like to see how you can assess uh, GPT right now, especially from Hong Kong, because yes. Uh, as far as I know, that uh, open uh, ChatGPT is not officially open to Hong Kong. So, how would you perform such uh, operations in Hong Kong areas? Thank oh, you. Thank you. Our, our Microsoft colleagues are outside, so <laughs> they're a very good friend of us. So we are our organization is quite lucky. We apply for the Azure. Open AI API access, and they have something called Open API Studio. Uh, I think we are the first batch of company in Hong Kong got access to that. And I heard there's a waiting list, but if your organization uh, organization apply for that waiting list, it shouldn't wait too long. I heard two weeks ago was like say two weeks of waiting time. So uh, if you haven't done it, I, I would I would recommend to do so. So you then you will have your official access and. Um, and there's a you know TNC agreement, data piracy, that kind of things. I think the, the good thing for us and is um, you know for an organization like us is you know we want to make sure the data you know we are you know pumping pumping to the model is within our control, within our environment. In the you know very old days, you know things doesn't go to the cloud. But I think now everyone accept public cloud or cloud. But then even if you update data there, you still need you know the agreement or you know the legal terms to protect your company. So, yes, please try, yeah. Thank you, Dr. Okay. John, for the, sorry, talk. yeah. It's Thank very you. 